when the Christians were celebrating Easter, uh, which is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we saw death and mayhem, and that was uh, just devastating. So it was something like what we experienced maybe during the war and during the tsunami and uh, all kinds of mixed emotions. Both Christians uh, and Muslims were both religious minorities in Sri Lanka. And we both had the pressure from the Buddhist extremists like Bodhu Balasena and other extremist groups which have attacked both the Christian church and the uh, Muslims as well even of burning of the Quran and or desecrating the Quran. And so why would they attack uh, the Christian minority who were actually who stood up for their rights, who worked with them closely, uh, who were the most, uh, you know, harmless people who never resorted to violence? In terms of NCESL and how we are dealing with the present situation is that we are looking at immediate needs and long-term needs. So as immediate needs, we are looking at uh, responding to the emergency situation, to medical needs uh, of affected victims, and we are looking at how we can be... Um, there are so many breadwinners uh, who have lost their lives and families, so we are looking at uh, how we can support in terms of livelihood, grants for these families long term. This was a fringe group, uh, a radicalized movement which had a lot of uh, foreign links uh, and brainwashed into believing that this ISIS ideology is what would take them to paradise. Some of them are supposed to be members of this Tawheed uh, Jamaat according to the State Minister of Defense and uh, which was a radicalized group. Now you've seen that there has been a few arrests immediately after this attack. There has been no massive search operations. The police have been able to discover explosives in uh, different places. So it seems that you know, there is a, a degree of uh, strong willingness and uh, you know, uh, also efficiency to after the Easter bombing. But at the same time, looking back towards the past, you know, there has been continuing violations against Muslims and Christians. And there has been very little action from the law enforcement authorities. In fact, the police have refused to accept some complaints. In fact, the police was present when some of these violations happened. Police officers have also questioned even the legality of Christian uh, worship and places of worship, even when they were private places of worship. We, although freedom of religion or belief is enshrined in our constitution. So I think this inaction on a small, like relatively small violations, I may call it, considering to what happened to the Easter bombings, indicates the absolute lack of unwillingness on successive governments, this government and the previous governments, to uh, hold people responsible, accountable for violence directed against uh, religious and ethnic minorities. When rule of law is not upheld and other communities are targeted and, and that continued to happen, then it, it sort of creates a polarization and, and extremism can uh, thrive in those kind of situations. There's a certain hostility about Christian places of worship, particularly evangelical Christians. So, so I think that general uh, intolerance, hostility is there. And that is what I think uh, motivates small local groups who are not necessarily coordinating with each other to direct uh, and engage in acts of violence against uh, local churches and local mosques. I think the hate speech 
that has taken place over the years possibly has contributed to this uh, sort of violence, extreme violence taking place. No, now we see Muslims being targeted in the aftermath of these uh, bombings and targeting of Christians. So Christians and Muslims who had a quite a cordial relationship in the last many years and decades, there might be tensions brewing between them, so we need to watch out for that. But even the majority Sinhalese Buddhists are affected by this. Even everyone is scared to be on the streets of Colombo. They are scared to be on a bus or a train or to go to a marketplace. Uh, they are scared to have a gathering. Uh, there is a lot of uncertainty about how to have services, uh, how do we do now security uh, for those who are coming in, do we need to screen everyone? Because church is a place which has been open to everyone. Church is not a place where you limit people coming. Church is a place where you just open your arms and welcome anyone. I think uh, the church would rise up to the challenge and do what is necessary to bring healing in this situation of brokenness and bring wholeness and Christ's love to those who are hurting. And even to those who perpetrate injustice against us, uh, we would love and bless them and uh, pray that uh, they would come into the knowledge of God, uh, even as they are misguided right now.